In this video, I'm going to be doing some different experiments with rust on encaustic. Now, this is a technique that I've done before, but it's honestly been a really long time. It's been years since I've tried to do it. It's, it's as much an experiment as it is a technique that I know works really well, um, especially some of the later uh, techniques that I'm going to be trying, because I'm going to be doing different ways of, of adding rust to the surface of your encaustic paintings. I always start with three layers. It's just a good amount of wax, and I've... I like to sometimes make those those layers really thick, so I'll dab the wax on the surface instead of just brush it sometimes, and that gives me a thicker covering. Now, this is how I've always really done adding rust to encaustic is by just kind of directly putting steel wool onto the surface of my painting and then spritzing it with a solution of half water, half white vinegar. So that's what I started out with this time. And you have to be prepared, you gotta let it dry, so which can take a while. The, these I left overnight once I soaked the steel wool really good. Now with this technique, there's a couple things you have to bear in mind. Um, when you're pulling the steel wool apart, you get a lot of just broken fibers that will land on your painting or on your workspace. And it can make a mess on the surface of your painting. You can see I have to take some time to kind of clean up those extra little fibers. And I, yeah, totally just messed up right there. Um, spread some of the thicker parts of the rust dust that was on this, had dried on the surface and yeah, just made a mess. So with the other one, I'm being very careful and I'm more successful at, at uh, removing those excess fibers, but that's something to bear in mind with, with when you add steel wool directly to the surface and then spritz it with the vinegar solution. Now to add wax on top of the rust, because there's so much dust and brushing it will just remove those, those shapes that have been created as the solution dried, uh, I always rock my brush to distribute the wax. And that really works well to add the wax on top of the shapes, but to keep the shapes and not, not uh, mess anything up. Now here I'm trying to kind of create a rusty solution that I can add straight onto my painting. So I take a little bit of a steel wool and pour some solution on top of it. And what I found with this is that it will rust, but the more steel wool that you use, the darker and the quicker the rust accumulates. So I ended up adding the rest of my steel wool pad into that cup and let it sit there for a little bit. And the bottom of that steel wool pad you can see is saturated with the solution and is rusting really, really well. It's very dark. So I take, I'm taking this and just squeezing out that solution straight onto my painting and I'm not getting any uh, excess steel wool fibers on the surface. And I'm getting a great rusty color and I'm putting things where I want them to be. So that technique works, works better in, in my opinion than just adding steel wool straight to the surface. And again, to add the wax on top, you know, you have to let it dry, which can take a few hours depending on how much solution you've squeezed onto the surface and then to make sure that you keep the shape and you don't spread the dust around when you brush wax you do the rocking motion and you'll you'll keep those shapes
So here I'm just using, this is a empty roll of tape, and I'm just using that to kind of shape the, the liquid rust onto the surface. So instead of trying to paint a circle, I, I poured it and let the, let the tape roll do the rest. And on the other side, I'm doing some incised lines and filling those in with the rest. I did them a little shallow, so I'm, I kind of wish that I had done them deeper. I think I would have gotten better lines by going all the way through the wax. And you can see that this rust that is from the solution that I, that I made, where it's just a little bit of steel wool with a lot of the solution. And you get rust that way, but it's, it's not as much. So yeah, the more steel wool you use, the darker the rust. So I used the end of that steel wool that I had soaked in the solution and to add a darker, richer color. But that's something to bear in mind is that you can, you can have a, there's a variety of colors that you can get when you, when you use the rust. You can do lighter or darker. Now here I, I scraped the excess wax that accumulates when you do incised lines. I scraped that away so I have just a clean line that's even with the surface. And then I use some water to just kind of wipe away some of the excess rust. And I got quite a bit of it, but there's some that once it's dried on the surface is not coming off, which is nice that you don't have to worry about all of your rust being removed when you when you wipe or you know make a mistake or something but um, it did mean that I had to scrape the surface to get those clean lines and remove all that excess rust now here I'm just kind of wiping away some of the excess rust and I was able to do that fairly cleanly but since I'm not adding any more wax, I'm doing just a last kind of final fuse on these two pieces just to make sure that the rust is encapsulated by the wax, even though I'm not adding wax onto the surface. And the my torch worked really well for this. You can see it kind of lit up some of the steel wool fibers a little bit. But uh, as long as you're careful, that's not anything to worry about. And then the wax kind of soaks in that rust on the final layer without kind of diluting that color and the results are pretty fun yeah this is a great technique i hope you guys try it let me know how it goes and i'll see you in the next video